François Hollande is meeting Vladimir Putin later this evening to discuss efforts to combat terrorism. France is keen to work with Russia to try to forge a grand coalition against ISIS jihadis in the wake of the Paris attacks. Gideon Rachman, our chief foreign affairs columnist, joins me now. Gideon, there was a lot of talk last week about this grand coalition. Uh, it does seem to have cooled off a little bit now. What do you think are the chances that we will end up with a grand coalition to fight ISIS? Well, I think you're right that in the immediate aftermath of the Paris attacks, the French clearly seemed quite drawn to the idea that you know, maybe we and Russia are actually are on the same side. We have a common enemy in ISIS. Um, and there was some talk like that. I think in the last couple of days it's cooled off a little bit, partly because I think President Hollande went to Washington, where they're much more skeptical of this idea, more wary of what the Russians are really up to in Syria, believing that they're undermining the moderate opposition who the US is still trying to push as an alternative to both ISIS and Assad. Uh, but I think it's going to take a few days for it to become clear what the French position is, because President Hollande is in a kind of round of shuttle diplomacy. He's seen President Obama, he's seen David Cameron, he's seen Angela Merkel. Now, the crucial visit, really, he's, uh, he's in Moscow. And he'll, I think, be listening very hard. It's possible that in the long run, there will be some sort of coming together of Western and Russian positions, but it's enormously complicated. Part of the problem here is the targets that Russia is, is, has been bombing. And last week, they did bomb a few ISIS targets. But since then, they have seemed to have gone back to bombing, you know, allies of Turkey and other, other rebels that are not ISIS. So how do you, I mean, how do you square this if you want to have a grand coalition? Well, with great difficulty. I mean, I think that really the one or other side is going to have to move. Either the Russians are going to have to really focus much more squarely on ISIS or maybe the West will move a little bit towards the Russian position, which is arguing that really all the opposition, it's a continuum, that this idea that there is a moderate opposition which has nothing to do with Islamism and jihadists. Um, even the French were sounding a little bit skeptical about that last week. But on the ground, the, there are two camps, uh, or three camps really. There's ISIS, then there's the regime and allied militias. And the third camp is rebels of all sorts of shades and, and colors. Unless you get these, all these forces to work, the two forces to work against ISIS, yeah. how do you get rid of ISIS? So, I mean, does it matter whether, the, whether you know, the US, France and Russia are really working together? Don't you need that to translate on the ground? Well, I think in the end, you need some sort of political solution. And, and uh, although all the focus, understandably, in the aftermath of Paris is, is hitting back with force, and that debate, as you know, is happening in Britain as well, there are also these talks going on in, in Vienna uh, with, with a lot of different parties around the table. And do you think that there's, there's hope that these talks will, will lead to a breakthrough? Well, you tell me. I mean, it seems to me, I feel ambivalent about them. I think on the one hand, it is the only way forward. It's good that you've got very diverse parties around the table, even the Saudis and the Iranians. But that also makes it incredibly hard to actually get there, and you sort of feel it's so urgent, can't they make some progress? But there, there are big issues to narrow. But maybe the, the, the thing that the Russians and the West could come together on is finding some middle ground on the fate of President Assad. So when the West says, OK, he doesn't have to go immediately, and the Russians say, OK, we do accept that over the long run he does have to go. And that could be the So germ. maybe cooperation more on the, on the diplomatic front. Yeah. How complicated um, would a grand coalition be, both on the diplomatic front and in, in the fight against ISIS. Uh, given what happened this earlier this week, the Turks shooting down a, a Russian plane. Sure. I mean, that's massively complicated things and made it the much more dangerous. And, you know, in the, the earlier conversation, I was talking like there are only two big parties to this diplomatic thing, the West and Russia. But of course, there are regional actors who feel even more passionately about this than the others. And, and, the, and actually, regional actors don't necessarily agree with each other no, here, do they? No, yeah. I mean, there's the Iranians on one side, the Turks and Saudis on the other. And, you know, for the Turks, it seems to me that ISIS maybe is only priority three, actually. They, they, they don't want the Kurds to make too much progress. And, of course, the Kurds are very closely allied to the Americans. And they, Erdogan is passionate about getting Assad out. So, uh, yeah, they're clashing very clearly with, with the Russians and now literally in, uh, shooting down their planes. And that's a hugely dangerous moment. I mean, this is the, the NATO managed to get through the whole of the Cold War without shooting down a Russian plane. They've just done it. On that note, Gideon, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much.